Welcome, everyone, to tonight's uh, game between the Pickett Mohawks and uh, Cave City. And uh, with me tonight is our favorite uh, Pickett announcer, Chris Bellers. And, uh, Chris, glad to have you along with us. Glad to be here. And also Ed Gargas with New Wave Communications. Ed, always a pleasure to, to have you in our booth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, so we're, I was anxious to get back. Yeah. Glad to be here. Good to see my good, my new best friend, Chris. <laughs> Chris, uh, Pickett opened up with a loss to uh, – uh, the, Ar the Arkansas team. Valley View. And then they've won two in a row. They beat Crothersville, and they also beat uh, Clarendon last Clarendon week. Clarendon last week. We're going to pause for the National Anthem and Prayer. Well, welcome back. And, again, we're glad that you joined us here on YHC TV. And uh, Chris Bellers along with Ed Gargis, Bill Hampton, we're going to be bringing you tonight's game. And uh, we want to tell you tonight's game brought, brought to you in part by the General Baptist Nursing Home and Rehabilitation Center in Campbell. The Pickett Diner, Kenny and Kim Woods, owner. Also, Clay County Abstract, Van Wenton, the owner. State Farm Insurance, Brett McMillan, the agent. Pickett Community Hospital, Emmanuel Baptist Church, Kevin Murray, the pastor. Al Williams Nursery, Royce and June Williams. Also, uh, Pickett Realty, Mike and Pat Patterson. Front Porch Flea Market, Monty Howell, the owner. Gregory Insurance, David Gregory, the agent. And Regions Bank, uh, Pickett. Again, glad to uh, think we want to thank those uh, fine folks for sponsoring uh, tonight's game. And if you enjoy watching this game, please let those people know how much you enjoy them making this game possible. Pickett comes into this game 2-1. Uh, and one. They've had uh, two big wins after the first loss, Chris, and, uh, and they beat a very fast Crothersville team, a very quick team. So that shows that uh, Pickett's got some, some mobility. Yeah, they, uh, they played real tough defense uh, down there at, at Crowlersville and they really contained the speed and last week they went down to uh, Clarendon and and they pulled that one out 24 to nothing and that was just through three quarters I think there was an injury to one of the players from Clarendon and they ended up calling the game there in the fourth quarter well the young man we understand that uh, we got a report uh, that uh, he was dismissed from the hospital in Memphis on uh, Sunday and uh, he actually walked out of the hospital to his home and we hope everything's fine and he'll be back uh, in pads and playing again soon, we hope. Uh, tonight, Cave City comes in. Very large team. Big, big guys. Ed, did you notice who uh, won the toss? No. Pickett won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Okay. Sleeping on the job. <laughs> I just it was so in, enthralled by the conversation Chris was bringing us that I, I took my attention away from the from the toss up there. So, uh. well, we appreciate all the comments that we've heard uh, from the fine folks at Pickett, telling us how much they enjoyed watching the game. Coming up to our booth tonight, I stopped by quite a few folks and how much they enjoyed it. Of course, they enjoy the local guy, Chris Bellers. He does a heck of a job, and he knows all these uh, folks. And we appreciate him being here. Who's kicking off for us, Chris? I'd be number fifteen, Alec uh, Samples. Samples. Yeah. Can't tell who's deep for Hard to Cave see City. Numbers. This game is underway. Nice kick. Good one. Back to the 14. Going to be returned by number 25, Ed. Yeah, number 25. That's Joseph Curtis. Boy, he's made a nice turn. He went around the right side. He's up over the 40 to the about to 43. And Cave City will put it in play. First and 10 from the 43. Looked like it was uh, Daniel Baldwin and Rob Rice that finally drug him down. Quarterback for the Cave City will be uh, Dalton Carpenter, number 10. We'll try to get as many people called as we can and try to get uh, get the cheerleaders for Pickett named. The band did a great job with the National Anthem and the alma mater. Looks like the Mohawks are going to start the defense tonight again in the 5-3. Cave City goes right to the shotgun. And off the number, is that 45? 45 around the left side. Good. Chase oh, Gormow. Wow. That's number 15, Alec Baldwin. He's just a sophomore, but he didn't hit like a sophomore, did he? Gain Not of that one. Time. Gain of one on the play. Going to bring up a second and nine. Gorman headed east there, trying to get around the corner. Mohawks just a little too fast. Boy, it's nice weather again tonight, isn't it? Just beautiful. Could You can't draw it up any better than this, folks. Who we got here? 
Back to number 12. Whoa, he stopped Tyler right at the line of scrimmage. He might have lost a yard that time. They hit him as soon as he touched the ball. That was Tyler, Tyler Eagleman. Correct. He's a junior, 175 pound. Sorry, guys, I couldn't see. I, if I had to pick one, I'd probably say number 72 made the tackle <laughs> West Woods. Let's just give He the, makes a uh, lot of them, that's for sure. Let's give the picket defense yeah, uh, the, the credit whole, on that. The whole, that, front, that just, whole front there was in on that. Carpenter under center. Boy, very tight formation. He's going to drop back. He's looking downfield. Only got one receiver. He's open, but oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Fingertips are going there. in for the touchdown is number 80, Tyler Asbury. That ball was tipped and goes in. A third play from the line of scrimmage. Uh, defensive man just got just got a little off balance, tipped the ball right into the hands of Asbury, and you've got to give Asbury credit. He stayed with it. He Absolutely. caught it went right in. So with uh, 10.57, with a minute and three seconds gone in this game, Cave City goes on top 6-0 into to tip the extra point. Oh, that was a heartbreaker for Rice, boy. He, <laughs> he saw it all the way in. It just went right off his hands. Number 55, that kick is no good. no good. Off to the left. Score will remain six to nothing. William Boyd on the cook on the kick, excuse me. Well, with timeout on the field, we're going to take timeout, send it back to the station to hear for a word from one of our sponsors, or some of our sponsors, and we'll be back in just a moment. For more than 100 years, Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance has been a leader in the abstract and title insurance business. Clay County Abstract is licensed in both Arkansas and Missouri. From the simplest to the most complex residential or commercial real estate transactions, let the professionals at Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance show you why customers continually turn to us for the reliability, responsiveness, and security they need. I'm Kevin Murray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Pickett. And I want to invite you and your family to join me and mine every Friday night for Mohawk football. And then on Sunday mornings, join us at Emmanuel Baptist Church as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come join us. The 2008 Mohawk football season is here, and Coach Dave Hendricks and the Mohawks are excited about the future. This could be the year that dreams come true for the Mohawks. I'm Coach Dave Hendricks, and I approve this message. For over 50 years, the General Baptist Nursing Home in Campbell, Missouri has provided professional health care for its residents. General Baptist Nursing Home is a 90-bed Medicare Medicaid certified facility with a wide range of services provided by Advanced Therapy Associates. We offer a full-time beautician, a special needs unit, an enclosed courtyard, lounging areas, superb dining, and medical staff 24 hours a day. General Baptist Nursing Home, a tradition of caring since 1954. Here we go. Looks like we got number one and number 12 back. That'd be Corbin, Corbin Chase. Chase and Rob Rice deep for the Mohawks. That Chris Ellers, he's just all over the personnel. Well, if you've been watching these kids as long as I have, <laughs> you would too. You'd know them. I tell you, I've given to spend a lot more time here in Pickett the last few weeks and all of Northeast Arkansas. Meet a lot of great people, and they all seem to know the Bellers. William have nothing but good things to uh, say William about William Boyd kicks the ball high and short, and the ball is caught and down. He fell down with it, so Pickett's going to take over on their own 34-yard line. Looked like number 44, Kyle Wright, that brought that one down. Good call, Chris. Good call. We'll see what happens here. Pick it down 6 nothing early in this game on a deflected pass. In case you missed that early, we'll be replaying this game several times. So uh, watch that. It was a nice pass, just a little short, and uh, but the ball was tipped. But that's one of those things that happens, folks. We see it uh, in college and in pro. Looks like Baldwin's going to be under center. Quick pitch back to number three. Number 23. 23, Jim three. Good gain of six on the play that time. Nice blocking up front by the line of Pickett. And on the tackle that time was number 30, I believe, Dakota Tuggle. Tell you what, uh, they've got some big guys. I, I, I looked over that lineup earlier today, and they got one guy 310 pounds. They're tall, too. They are. They're 6'4. Six six four. Six four. Yeah. Full house backfield for the Pickett Mohawks. 
Ball at time given to Morgan. Morgan's up close to the first down. Gordon where they mark. It's going to be about a yard short. We're going to give him three. Going to be a third and one. Quick hitter that time right up to center, Chris. Michael Morgan is a strong, I wouldn't say kid anymore. I'd say a man. He's a man now, but he just keeps the legs driving and just powers his way through there. Got a good spot on it. They're going to bring the chain in to uh, see if he got a first and ten. We're expecting a uh, offensive game tonight. He's going to get that first and first ten, it down. looks like. He got it. Boy, that just <laughs> that excites the whole crowd when Sean Parker does that. <laughs> Sean Parker does a great job with the public address system here at the Pigot. Fine guy. Enjoy talking to him. I tell you what, when you're around him, you're just, you just feel good, don't you? Yeah. Can't help but smile. Yep. Ball went under center, full house backfield. Pat, uh, like ball. Justin Howell. Howell's got it. Boy, nice game, wow. five yards. Driving, Look driving, Look at that driving. blocking up front now. That's that's what's uh, good up front. Uh, the guys from Pickett really doing some good blocking. Who's on the tackle, Ed? I believe that was the uh, junior, Garrett McSpadden, brought him down from behind. You said McFadden? No, McSpadden, okay. I believe it is, with an S, S-P. Okay. McSpadden. Josh Moore and David Blackburn are really uh, leading that charge there. Cody Holcomb, good blocking by the Pickett uh, lineman. Baldwin's going to keep it himself. Cuts back. He's going to get the first and ten he as did. he crosses the uh, 45 of the uh, Cave City Cavemen. You know, he does a good job when he scrambles back there. He'll get hit and he'll spin or he'll juke. and yep. He gained another three yards after he was hit the yep. first time. Looked to be the sophomore, Robert Davis, number 49, and maybe Dakota Tuggle, number 30, in on that tackle. Baldwin's like, give me just a minute there, Ralph. Lost well, he lost shoe. his shoe. <laughs> There's a good crowd tonight, isn't there? Nice crowd. Kobe Loveless bringing the play in from the side. Pickett's move from their own 34 down to the, uh, let's call it the 44 of Cave City. Hand quick, off up the middle again. To quick hit to three. three. He's going to get four. Bring up a second six. Senior linebacker Braden Crabtree, number 22, initial hit on that stop. Oh, I'm just amazed the blocking uh, the Mohawks. Much, uh, much improved, much better than the first game we saw. Of course, they were up against a good team in Valley View. I mean, a good team. They were, and Valley View was a bigger school. You know, they had some big kids. But you know what? Cave City's got some big kids, yes, too. But it looks like the holes are there tonight. So far, anyway. Quick pitch to 23-3. He's across the uh, 35, down to the 33. We've got a flag on the play. I would he, say probably a face mask if I had to guess. Number 42, Garrett McSpadden, and number 30, Dakota Ice Tuggle on the, was. on the tackle there. Calling Tuggle's name quite a bit early in the game. Yes, that's going to be another City. 15 on top of that game. That's going to take that ball down inside the 20. Pickett's going to be in great field position here. You know what, guys, that hole They're going to call it five yard, five, five yard. Five-yard mask. Still first and 10, but it's down to the 29-yard line. Let's call it the 28 of Cave City. You know, the Mohawks appear to be driving the ball really well tonight on their first possession. They're just great blocking. I mean, that's hadn't had to put the ball up yet. Full house backfield. Ball went under center. Pitches Pitch to back three. to three. Three's around the left side there. Boy, I thought he was going to be gone. Nice tackle that time by Cave City. Who was on that, Ed? That's number 66, Allen Wright. That's a big boy right there. Yes. Gain of six on the play. Going to be second and four. Program has him listed at 6'5", 240. <laughs> That's a big guy right there. Maybe 6'3". Fax copy's a little blurry here. Show good quickness. Ball, balls to Hal. Hal uh, right up uh, over the uh, right tackle there. He's going uh, to be very again. Very, Allen very Wright. close to first and ten. Of course, you get as big as Allen is, you, you're going to be in on a few first tackles. down. Pickett's really driving the ball good. They're eating up time and going right down on the ground with 7.42 to go in this first quarter. Cave City on top, 
Six nothing over the Pickett Mohawks, but Pickett Mohawks now inside the 20-yard line. They're in the red zone with first and ten. Sorry, Ed. I What's wasn't that? listening. I was getting into the game. Was you oh. talking to me? <laughs> Not a bit. Okay. Not a bit. Bill's doing all the talking. Ed was giving that sign first and ten. Michael Morgan, Morgan with the ball. Good quick hitter. I tell you what, what I'm noticing right now. Much quicker uh, ball handoffs due to the running backs, and they're hitting that line with full speed ahead. Yes, I noticed that also. Um, the hole's there, yep. and they're just right through it. Right. You know, and then the secondary is having to make the tackles. So that's that's good for Pickett. You also notice that that those first line, they're not stopping them when when they get hit. They're falling backwards. Pickett's exactly. knocking them backwards. Second four three around the left side. There, he's going to uh, be caught from behind. He's going to gain uh, at least two on the play. Going to bring up a third down and two. Got about six minutes and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Been a fast quarter, but, you know, Pickett's got, we've only had one pass. That went for a touchdown for Cave City, and the rest of it's been on the ground. Uh, no, uh, no out of bounds play, so the clock's running. Howell with the ball. He's going to get the first and 10. Uh, he's across the 10 down to the six-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for the Mohawks from the six-yard line. May have been Robert Davis, number 49, on the stop there. May have to call that from the seven-yard line. But it's first and goal. Got number 87. Pitts running into play. Pitts and Lovelace bring those plays in and out after uh, for each play. Full house backfield. Baldwin pitches back to three. Three cuts it back oh. inside. He's met but keeps driving. He's going to get inside the five down to the four. Going to bring up a second and goal from the four-yard line. Kind of curious to where they're going to spot the ball. They've got it on the four according to the ref on our side here. Looked like number 49 are leading the charge for the cavemen on that stop, but uh, there's just a big group of people. Kind of hard to pick all the numbers out. Well, on a running play like that, you've got 22 people all all in and in, in around the ball. It's hard to pick out one, two, or three. Michael Morgan. Morgan He's inside. Close. He's touchdown, for a touchdown, Michael Morgan. Yeah. Good quick hit there. That's what I'm talking about. They're much more crisp hands-offs. The guys are full speed when they get to their quarterback, Baldwin. He puts that ball right in the gut, and they're going right on through with a great blocking by the line. Yes. All in this whole series of, of uh, plays, the line has done a wonderful job. I'll tell you what, they are blowing people out. i tell you what, this right here is what I've been looking for all season long, you know, and they're coming together and starting to look really well. Going for two. They're going to go for two. They feel confident the way they're moving the ball. Full house backfield. Baldwin has it. Pitches back to three. Three's going to go outside and got it. No, going to be stopped short, just short. So at the uh, with 5:23 to go in this first quarter, score is tied, six-six. We'll be back yeah. in just a moment with the kickoff. Piggott Community Hospital is a proud sponsor of Piggott Mohawk football. For over 60 years, Piggott Community Hospital has delivered quality health care to the communities of Northeast Arkansas and Southeast Missouri. Please visit all our locations, including our home health, medical equipment store, and medical clinic in Campbell, Missouri. You can visit our website at piggottcommunityhospital.com or call us at 870-598-3881. Piggott Community Hospital, where quality people give quality care. This is your State Farm Agent, Brett McMillan and we know that getting the best value for money is important to you when you're looking for insurance. That's why for great service and coverage, nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Please stop by our office located on the Pickett Square or give us a call at 598-2808 for all your insurance needs. State Farm wishes the 2008 Pickett Mohawks a successful season. The Piggott Diner, located on the historic square in Piggott, opens seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
Friday night buffet with ribs, catfish, chicken, frog legs, fried shrimp, and all the trimmings. Plus homemade pies and cobblers and everyone's favorite ice cream. Sunday lunch buffet from 11 to 2. Our phone number is 870-598-5130. Call for takeouts, but better yet, come enjoy meeting with your friends at the Piggott Diner. What a drive that time by hey, the that, Mohawks. That, that was really <laughs> awesome. I mean, it was like we said a while ago, you know, the holes are there. The backs are hitting on full speed. They took the ball down from probably the 35. They drove all the way to the other end. and I didn't count the number of plays, but like you said, Chris, it's consistently four or five yards a drive. Yeah, they, look, they looked really good. It's more than three in a cloud of dust right now. Absolutely. Right. Okay, Absolutely. we're getting ready to, for this kickoff. Glad that you joined us on YHC TV. Number 15, Alex Samples. That was a nice kick. Ball fumbled. A lot of times that, a lot of times that will throw the, the defense off, but not the Mohawks not, this time. They're just too quick, Bill. That Tyler Engelman again on the on the on the brink on the uh, run back. Well, he brings it to the 25-yard line of the Cavemen. I think it was Travis Pond that brought him down. Maybe Michael Morgan. I just get excited sometimes, and I forget to look. Well, as an announcer, you cannot get excited. Well, <laughs> you picked the wrong person to be in here then. <laughs> he can get excited, just not too excited one side right. of the ball. Carpenter under center. Man in motion. Reverse. Good, good to play that time. Good run. About five yards. Gain of five. Trying to see who carried the ball. I tell you, those numbers are hard to spot from up here. That's number 12, uh, Tyler Engelman. Who's in on tackle that time, Chris? The whole defense. The whole defense <laughs> good. <laughs> well, Inside Quick. handoff. Oh, yeah, it only goes for a gain of one. What great defense. Look like. That time it was uh, Daniel Baldwin and Travis Fawn again. Number 32 on the carry there. There's Jeremy Johnson for the caveman. Johnson is a 5'9 junior, 170 pound. Bring up about a third down and five. We know what happened last time on this play. One deep receiver. Ball tipped and went right in his hands. He went uh, with the distance for the TD. Going to keep it on the ground this time. Just does a little slipping. Knocked out of bounds. Great tackle that time. Open field tackle by Baldwin. Number 45, Chase Gorman on the run. Good stop that time by the Mohawks. Going to bring up a fourth and two. Clock's running. Four minutes to go in this first period. Let's see if the cavemen go for it. Looked like the coach called him over to call a play. Awful early to be trying this and uh, deep in their territory, too. They're going to go for they it. Are. It's fourth. See if they try to draw them off on the count. The counter at town to the outside. We got a flag and oh, knocked out of bounds. Wow. What a hit. Alex Samples and Daniel Baldwin teamed up on that hit. Chase Corman on the carry. We got a flag. Holding. Got a holding against Cave City. I guess that uh, they got got the first and ten on that, so Pickett's going to take the uh, penalty. Still going to be fourth down. It's going to be 11. Now they're going to send in the punting team. Cave City will. The Mohawks will send back Daniel Baldwin and Rob Rice will be your deep man. Instead of fourth and two, we got a fourth and 12. Coach decided maybe we think do things a little bit different this time around. Looks like 21. Number 21 going to do the punting there. That's with Tyler Woods. High kick. And a caveman bounce. 
Going to be blown dead at the Pickett 39 yard line. That's where the Mohawks will take over. Al Williams Nursery, located on 1167 East Main in Pickett, supports the Pickett Mohawks from flowers to grass seeds to fertilizer to trees. See, uh, at, go to Al Williams Nursery. They're open from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, 8 to noon on Saturdays. Phone. 870-598-3357. It's Al Williams Nursery in Piggott. Baldwin comes back up under center. Up the middle to number 40, Justin Howell. Looks like he'll pick up maybe two, maybe three yards. I think it was Morgan that time with that the ball. That was Michael Morgan. Yep. Quick, quick hitter, I tell you. Boy, they're, they're just driving the ball. They're like getting... Three and four yards, Ed, like you said, after that uh, first drive. First drive was uh, 64, 66 yards. He took over this time on their 39. Three with the ball, going to go around the left side. Student body left. He's got the first and 10 he's and more. He's going to go. Goes. Drug down from behind. About the 28-yard line, looks like. Three down to the caveman's 28-yard uh, line. Let's call it the 29. They're going to mark it just inside the 30. About what a 26-yard pickup. Great run, but great block. Did you notice how the blocks were leading out there? Look, look like uh, the Green Bay Packers pulling you know, out there. What they said, <laughs> student body left, student body right. You know, I like that when the, when the back gets back behind his lead blockers and it just opens right up. Absolutely. Gets that wedge out there and gets it going. And credit there to the safety, uh, senior Derek Tuggle, or Dakota Tuggle, excuse me, staying with that play and not giving up on him, bringing him down from behind. 3 11 o'clock stopped because he was out of bounds. Bowen gives to Hal. Hal's going to be stopped to line of scrimmage for no gain. Good uh, tackling that time by the cavemen. It's number 66 with the initial hit. Again, Alec Wright, or Allen Wright, excuse me, and then uh, Garrett McSpadden sealing the deal there. It's the first time they've stopped a Piggott uh, offensive play for no gain. The hole was kind of stopped. <laughs> well, it was. It was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the line has been doing a great job yes, offensive line have. for the Mohawks. Baldwin back, tipped his first pass. He puts it up. He's got Rice. Yeah, what a catch. What a catch. What a catch. <laughs> Holy cow. He was extended all the way out in there and come down with that ball. That was He laid out. That catch. that was beautiful. A beautiful pass. Just And Rice just laid out perfectly for that. You know, Baldwin just threw it out there and said, if you want to go get it, he that's did. what he did. He put it where only, only his receiver could catch it. It's going to be first to go from the eight-yard line for the Mohawks. <laughs> Look like a swan dive. <laughs> it did. I'll tell you, beautiful catch. And hung on to it because I can tell you, when you hit that ground with the ball, uh, it can knock the breath out of you. Three, around the left side. He's got the quarterback blocking for him in front of him. Touchdown, Touchdown. Jim Three. What a run and what a block at time by Alex Baldwin. I tell you what, that young man, he handles the ball very well, and he's not afraid to get out there and put his nose in front of somebody. Three followed that block beautifully right into the corner. Mohawks go up 12-6 to six with 2.08 to go in the first quarter. What another great drive. 66 yards on the first drive, 61 yards on this drive. Coach says good job, guys. Boy, it's, uh, they look like they're together tonight, don't they? they do. Really playing well. Corbin Cuts it back Chase. up. There he goes. Going to be good. He's in. Who is that? That's Corbin Chase. Corbin Chase one. with a two-point conversion. Puts pick it up. 14 to 6. Beat over number 16. C. Yeah, beat number 16, Nick Townsend on the corner there. Yeah. We're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back, and we want to tell you tonight, one of our sponsors for all your real, real estate needs, see Pickett Realty. From farms to owning your own home to rentals to property and more, call Mike or Pat Patterson at 870-598-3142. That's Pickett Realty. They say go Mohawks. 
Well, 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 we got 15 back again. Alex Sample's going to kick the ball. And Tyler Engelman deep for the Cavemen. We're gonna, we'll learn these guys' names by the end of the game. Another nice Nice, kick. nice kick. Who's got it, Ed? Engelman. Tries right. right side. Brings the ball up over the 30 uh, to about their Cavemen's 31. They'll take over first and 10 from there. Two minutes and a second left in this first period. A lot of action already. Mm -hmm. Both teams have touched the ball twice. I think that was Kyle Wright, if I'm looking at it right. I think he's the one that finally brought him down. We're going to have a official's timeout on the field with a uh, equipment repair. We're ready for play now. Again, glad you joined us on YHC TV. We bring all the pig at home football games. Oh, wow. Alex Samples. Car Carpenter pitched back to Gorman that time, and they're going to throw him for about a seven yard loss. Going to bring up a second and 17. Boy, Ed, or let's call it eight yard loss. Man, that's a great defensive play, Ed. Absolutely. The, the Mohawks, they strung that thing out there. Gorman kept looking for a lane. I'm sure Coach over there might have preferred if, if Chase might put that ball in his right hand, or his left hand, excuse me, when he's going around the, le the, the left side there. But he protected it well. Carpenter and in the shotgun. shotgun. He's going to drive back to pass. Downfield. Boy, he's got a receiver. Three defenders. Almost came down with Almost it. Almost saw the same thing we did a while ago. Well, it was off his fingertips. That was Tuggle on the reception there, or the attempted reception. Well, the Pickett uh, defensive backs were all had him surrounded, but he was right in the center. The ball liked to be liked to be looped right into uh, to right into the uh, the hands. I apologize. I said Tuggle, but that was Tyler Engelman, the intended receiver. Brings up a third and 18. Carpenter again in the shotgun. He's going to drop back. He's looking for someone. He's got someone across the middle. And he dropped the ball. Ball was intended for number 25. That is Joseph Curtis. It looked like uh, he didn't feel the defense right on him, and he may have started looking upfield just before he got the ball. That's going to bring up a fourth down and 18 for the cavemen. Who's back deep for Pickett? Baldwin and Rice. What wind we have, and it's not a very strong wind. It might be three to five miles an hour, and it's out of the north, so it, the wind will be with the punter. Ball snapped back. Punts away. Nice punt, high punt. Rice is going to take the ball, and he's 35. He's to the 40, 45. He's going around the right side, across midfield. Down to the Cavemen 46-yard line. Rob Rice, a nice return that time. Good blocking by the Pickett, uh, Pickett uh, team. one oh one left to go in this first period. Pickett on top of Cave City, 14-6. It's been a very exciting first it has. quarter also. It has. I'll tell you, a lot of a action. A lot of football. Well, we can tell you right now, Pickett has a total of 127 yards offense in their first two possessions. Wow. Quick uh, handoff to three. He's uh, across the 45, down to the 44. It's going to bring up a second and eight. Allen Wright on the tackle, number 66. Called his name quite a bit, and I think we're going to keep calling it most of the evening. I think you're right. He's a big guy that looks like he loves to play the football. You say he was 6'5", 6'4", 6'5"? 6'5", maybe 6'3". Howell with the ball. He's across the 40, down to the 39. Allen Wright again on the tackle. I tell you, I, I am just amazed 
from three weeks ago in that first game with Valley View, how quick Pickett's getting the ball back to those uh, backfield guys to run and how fast they're hitting the hole. I mean, an altogether difference. We'll call it the 40-yard line. Going to bring up a third and four for Pickett. Looks like time is probably going to run out before we get another snap. I think snap. that's the quarter. So that's going to end the first quarter with the Pickett Mohawks on top of the Cave City Cavemen. 14 to 6. We'll take a short break and be back in just a moment. Well, welcome back. We want to tell you some of our sponsors for this game tonight. Front Porch Flea Market has furniture, appliances, and much more. Front Porch Flea Market also has propane 20 pound bottle exchange. Also available at Front Porch uh, Flea Market are rental booths for only $50. There's only two of those left. Give Bonnie Howell a call at 870-598-2014. And Bonnie says, good luck, Mohawks. Also, Gregory Insurance, located at 205 South 3rd Avenue on the Square in Pickett, has been insuring the people of Northeast Arkansas since 1904. For all your insurance needs, call David Gregory at 870-598-2622. The staff at Gregory Insurance are proud supporters of the Pickett Mohawk football. Here we go. Howe with a quick uh, hit across the uh, 35, down to the 33 of the caveman, or, and it's going to be another first and 10. Dakota Tuggle in on that tackle, number 30. Piggott has he had a first and 10 every time that they've had the ball. Looks like Chase and Samples is going to go in. Number 87, I think that's Josh Pitts. And Hal and three will come out. Hal and three are coming out. So they're going to try some of the sophomores, looks like, in the backfield this time, guys. Pickett's moving the ball at will. Look at there. Number 15. A lot of room, a lot of speed. Look like Alex Samples. And Another the hole was there again. Another good run. I tell you, you just can't give the Pickett uh, offensive line enough credit. They are because they're just taking the ball up the middle. Every now and then going to going to the uh, outside. But most most of their games, are, they're, they're just uh, picking line and doing a great job tonight. Yeah. That's number 21, Tyler Woods, in on the tackle initially. He, then he got a couple partners helping him out. Clues. There's Corbin oh, Chase what around a quick, in. That, young, that little 21. guy's quick. Hey, that guy. Tyler Woods again. Got on the a tackle. flag right there. And a flag. Play. Coming kind of late. Absolutely. Always fired up. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Samples that time with the ball. No, it's three, three, wasn't it? Yeah, Jim, three. Looks like he's going to lose a yard on that. Going to bring up a second 11. Down to 10, 20 to go in this uh, first half of play. Pick it on top, 14 to 6 of the cavemen. Look like number 33, Kyle Bradford in there. Busting up that play. I want to I want to say hats off to you, Ed. Those numbers are hard to read from up here. Boy, what a quick hit that time by Hal as he goes off the uh, right uh, tackle. Yeah, it was a big hole. We it saw was. that perfectly. Yeah, Steve got that. Steve Johnson on camera for us tonight. He should have got a good shot of that. Good quick hit that time. Goes for a gain of four. Going to bring up a third and seven. You know, I think another step, and he'd have been in the end zone. I believe so. Well, that, we can just see that perfect. It was just like it was made for us. Hope we got that well for you folks watching on TV. Looking at third and seven. There's three. Boy, look at him lunge forward. He's going to be close. I think the knee got there before the ball crossed the line. Is that going to be enough for a first down, that, or is it going to be a little short? That's what I'm looking at. It looks like it's going to be uh, about a yard short, according to the uh, yard marker on the sideline. But they're going to they're going to measure. They're going to measure, see how close they are. Pickett's going to go for it. Less than a yard on fourth down. Ball to Howell. He's trying to drive for it. It looks like he's going to come up short. Number 16, Nick Townsend leading the charge there for the caveman. They're going to measure again. Well, they want to make That's sure right. that they, they, they can get a first right. down without right. getting a touchdown. Yes. Prior to the play, we saw number 21, Tyler Woods, 
heading off the field, favoring that uh, right shoulder a little well, bit, it looked it, like. The way he was walking off, looked like it might have been upper collarbone or yeah. somewhere in there. It didn't look too I think good. he handles the kicking and punting duties for the caveman, so that could affect him a little bit later in the game as well. Cave City stopped by looked like maybe an inch or two, so Cave City will take over deep in their territory. We're going to call it the uh, one-yard line, but Piggott, if they get after it on defense, who knows, they come up with a safety or make them punt deep in their territory and get great field position. Eight minutes, 50 seconds to go in this second period. Pickett still on top of Cave City, 14 to six. First time Cave City has stopped the Pickett uh, Mohawks. Carpenter under center. Wow. Boy. Bill can't tell you who got the ball that time. I can't, I can't, can't tell you who got the ball, can't tell you who got the tackle. It looked like a scrum going on, because I mean, they were all tied up there together. So they're just trying to wedge that ball out. You can tell they're being very careful back there. But that may have been the fullback, Jeremy Johnson, with the ball. Looks like it stayed right there where it started. Yeah, no gain. Second 10 for the cavemen. Clock is running. Beautiful night for football. Field in excellent shape. Oh, oh that's going to be a safety. They got the right safety. safety. They got the safety. Who was in on that tackle? Number two, Daniel Baldwin, and number 12, Rob Rice. That was Tyler Engelman trying to get around the corner. He took one step out, it looked like, but then he got met by the two Mohawks. And uh, well, that was great defense that time by Pickett. And uh, again, it's, uh, they didn't get the touchdown, but they came away with two points. Now, uh, Cave City will uh, elect a kick from the 20. They'll either punt or use the tee to kick off. We'll see what they do. Pickett should get the ball in great field position. Plenty of time to go in this second quarter as Pickett's on top now of Cave City, 16 to six, with 8.02 to go in the first half of play. You know, Bill, I guess I to apologize to uh, Daniel Baldwin. I, last week we were, or two weeks ago, when we were doing the Valley View Pickett game, and. There was a really good hit over on the far side, and I said, that was number 15, Alex Samples, and Alec come up to me after the game, and he said, boy, you took that one away from Daniel, so I'll <laughs> give it back to him. <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you guys, we, we, uh, we don't call favorites up here, we just call it, and those numbers are very hard to see from here. And uh, again, we, we appreciate the picket schools for allowing us to come up here to the press box, and we've got great facilities. It's just hard to see, and, and uh, we, I guess we need to put uh, binoculars up here. All of us wear bino you know, well, have binoculars. That I, way was, we could I was just getting ready to say it has everything to do with the age of the eyes that are looking, <laughs> not the condition of the facilities okay. that we've been granted. <laughs> well said, Dr. Who Gargas. We, who we got back looks like Alex Samples and Rob Rice. Short kick that time. And we've got a whistle on the play. May have all sides on the kick. They have a procedure call. That's going to back them up even farther. Mm -hmm. Ed, who's number 55? For Pickett, that's William Boyd. Morales. 55 is William Boyd. Yeah, William Boyd for uh, Cave City. My bad. Looked like he uh, hurt his leg that time, or foot, ankle. He was favoring it. Sure was. Hopefully he's okay. That backs him up five yards. Be kicking off from uh, the 15 now. Pickett mm -hmm. should get great field position. Nice kick that time. I think he liked that one better. I think that's Rob Rice. He's found the seam. There it goes, down the side. Oh, oh what a tackle. He got upended right there at the 30-yard line. That's the kicker of number 55, William Boyd, protecting the deep. Boy, he took his legs right off from underneath. He sure there. did. But what a nice return at time. About a 30-yard return. 
Pickett will take over at the Cave City 30-yard line. We've got an injured player on the field. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in just a moment. For more than 100 years, Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance has been a leader in the abstract and title insurance business. Clay County Abstract is licensed in both Arkansas and Missouri. From the simplest to the most complex residential or commercial real estate transactions, let the professionals at Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance show you why customers continually turn to us for the reliability, responsiveness, and security they need. I'm Kevin Murray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Pickett, and I want to invite you and your family to join me and mine every Friday night for Mohawk football. And then on Sunday mornings, join us at Emmanuel Baptist Church as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come join us. The 2008 Mohawk football season is here, and Coach Dave Hendricks and the Mohawks are excited about the future. This could be the year that dreams come true for the Mohawks. I'm Coach Dave Hendricks, and I approve this message. For over 50 years, the General Baptist Nursing Home in Campbell, Missouri, has provided professional health care for its residents. General Baptist Nursing Home is a 90-bed Medicare, Medicaid-certified facility with a wide range of services provided by Advanced Therapy Associates. We offer a full-time beautician, a special needs unit, an enclosed courtyard, lounging areas, superb dining, and medical staff 24 hours a day. General Baptist Nursing Home, a tradition of caring since 1954. Here we go. Welcome back. The injured player off the uh, field looks like uh, he's being tended to, and hopefully the young man will be okay. Mohawks come up to the line of scrimmage. Daniel pitch back to 23-3, and he's going to come around the end, find him a hole. Look at that. There it is. Him go. Wow. Run out of bounds by that's number 33. Dylan Salas. You know, it's almost like a different team. These guys are like they can just see everything in front of them tonight. I mean, they're following their blockers, hitting the holes, and they're doing it quickly. Well said, Chris. I, I, it was it was fun to watch three that time. As he did, he waited for his blockers to get out front. He didn't try to outrun them. He just followed them, and, and they just opened up a seam for him, and right down the sideline he went. He takes it down to the 11-yard line. We got a uh, flag on the play. It's going to be against uh, Pigott. It's going to be a procedure call. That'll back them up five yards and look at first and 15. Or first and they and still 15. had the opportunity to make a first down before the touchdown, correct? Right. It's, it <laughs> had to get inside the one. Time. Right. Got about a uh, yard. They got to get get down inside the one to get a first and ten. Well, they know what they didn't get done last time, so now they'll be able to get it done this time probably. Here we go again. Three with Ditch. the ball. They run out of bounds by a group. Got another flag on the play. Number 45 on the cave men. Chase Corman leading the charge. Holding against Piggott. It's going to drive Pickett back even further. They're talking it over with Cave City to see what they want to do. It's first and uh, 15 right now if they take the penalty. It's going to back Pickett up even more, and they're going to take the penalty. First and 25. Well, I think this close you almost got to. I agree. You, you, you know, first and – 15 from the 16. First and 25 from the from the 26 is a lot better. Mm -hmm. Well, it's they saw what happened the last time they let Pickett right. get that close to the line. Right. They went ahead. They made the great defensive stop, but uh, Pickett's defense said, "Okay, we, we, we'll come back, see what we can do." I think they made probably made the right choice. Oh, I yeah, I, I, I that I, yes, Cave they City made the right choice. Yeah. Sure. Well, not only that, I mean. I'm not exactly sure, Chris, on the field goal kick, kicking capabilities, but from the 26, you're looking at a 43-yard kick. In high right. school, that's, that's state worthy right there. We're 10 yards up, 33, very doable. Right. Well, let's see what the Mohawks can do. They come Real. out with a different uh, type offense, two wideouts. 
And one in the slot. Ball went back. He puts it up. Ball. Oh. Ball was intended for. Michael Morgan, number 33. You know, it looked like that time we had uh, – Pickett had two wideouts out there, and Cave City only had one. And Nick boy, they Townsend. Took, they took off. And then uh, Townsend played it pretty good. He uh, he saw a ball and commit to the to the shorter receiver. And, uh, but then he went after the ball, missed it, and got a little lucky. Well, when Townsend cut inside, it, he blocked the view there of Morgan. Of Morgan, yep. and, and it, it uh, threw it off. They're going to go with the same offensive setup. Rice City's is got two slot. out this time. Two wide outs. Rice is in motion. Ball handed up uh, to uh, Howell. He goes up uh, the center, or up through the middle there. Look like he may have picked up uh, three. That's number 66 again, Allen Wright leading the charge, and bringing him down. Go bring up a third and 22. Clock is running. Six and a half minutes to go in his first half. Guys, I tell you, from our vantage point and the booster's cooking point, those hamburgers, <laughs> I'm looking forward to halftime. Now, that smoke that you see on, on the screen there, that's not us burning things up. That's the uh, that's Rodney Rouse oh, over there man. and his special burger. Ball went back, drops back. And he's he's got the ball. He's going to keep he's it. Gonna he's going to go around the left side. He, got, oh, he gets he passed. Through. What a move. Oh, wow. Wow. He brings that down to the two, three-yard line. He put a move on that guy. I don't know. That was number 30, number Dakota Tuggle. Wow. But Dakota kind of got back on his heels and tried to arm wrap him instead of putting that shoulder in Daniel. And Daniel said, okay. See ya. <laughs> that's what we'll do. It's going to bring up a fourth and three. From the four. What a nice move by Baldwin. I mean, he uh, juked and uh, cut it back inside and uh, duked the uh, the defensive man. Great play, a great offensive run there. They're going to come back with the T this time. Pick it with a full house. Fourth and three. Fans are into it. Oh, a quick hit. Uh, it. Counter up. Boy, that'll be close. close. I think he might have. I don't It's hard to tell, but, boy, he – Looked like he fell right down on the goal line. Number 33, Dylan Salas gave him first on the first stop. And first ten. and 10. So it's going to be first to go from the one. Boy, Pickett had it first and 25. And in four downs, they, they gained 25 yards and get it get it down to a first and go from the one. Clock is running with 5.15 to go in this first half. Just Plenty amazing. of time. Pickett going with the full house again. We're going to have a motion penalty against the Mohawks. From about the five. From the five. Pitch to three around the left side. Look at him drive. Get in there. Look at him drive. He did. He just kept pushing and pounding and pumping them legs. Those he just pushed that guy oh, right back. Well the said, Chris. Yeah. We had a good shot at those legs. Just uh, just kept on driving. Preston Barnett attempted to make the stop. He you know, he made contact, but he didn't make the stop. You know, Threat's a small guy, but man, that kid is just solid. Well, that's the thing too. They they get their momentum. They play downhill football, and a uh, Cave City. They're not going to make the stop if they just stand there and wait for them to hit them. That's right. 4.51 to go in this first half play. Pick it on top, 22 to 6. They're going to go for two again. Got two split to the right and one to the left. Ball went in the gun. He drops back to pass. He's looking. Got a man. Number 22. It's, no it's going to be good. just a little bit short. Yeah. Ball thrown just a little bit behind 33, him. that's Michael Morris. Michael yeah. Morris. That looked like 22 from back here. Maybe I am getting old. My eyes need to be readjusted. Michael Morgan. I, I, yeah. I, well, with timeout on the field with 4.51 to go, the Pickett Mohawks on top of Cave City, 22 to 6. We'll take a short break and be back in a moment. Alex Samples back to kick the ball for the Mohawks. Low, Low line, line drive. drive. And he fumbled it. He picks it up. Number 12, boy, he is going. Boy, he's fast. going down that left side. That's Tyler Engelman. Nice run back after the uh, fumble. He gets up over the 40 to the 43-yard line, we'll call it. Be first and 10 for the Cavemen from their own 43. Looked like he ran into Justin Howell, number 40, at just a dead sprint. 
and they just kind of fell. <laughs> Let's call it to 44. Chris, I'll let you rely on your high school physics to tell us what happens when two moving, two objects in motion hit and collide. The stronger one wins. <laughs> <laughs> There's that defensive line of Piggott again. Stack them up right there. He might have gained one. Who had the ball on that one? I didn't see it. I believe it was Gorman. Gained one. Going to be a second and nine. You know, as long as nobody is, is uh, on any of those fellows and they turn this way, we can see their numbers just well. Maybe they'll, when they get the ball, they'll stop and pose. We can tell, tell you who's got the ball. Gorman has the ball. Ball pitch back to him. Nice cut back. Good tackle at time by the interior line by the Pickett Mohawks. A gain of two on the play. Going to bring up a third and uh, six. six, we'll call it. Who was in on the tackle? Look like Cord, Pike, and Daniel Chandler. Gorman that time was trying to, to go to the outside. That uh, hole was filled. He cut it back to the inside and really got something out of nothing. Trap play inside. Ball handed off that time too. Look like number 32, Cole. Jeremy Johnson. Look like Cord Pike and Adam Carpenter right up the middle there made the stop. It's going to be a fourth and three, and we've got timeout on the field. So with timeout on the field, the Pickett Mohawks still on top of K-City, 22-6 with 3.08 to go in the first half. We're going to send it back to the station. Here we go. It brings up a fourth down. Cave City's in punt formation. Ball snapped back. Kicks away. Ball's going to bounce. Good Rob bounce. Rice is going to let it roll, and the ball is going to go down to the five-yard line of the Mohawks where they'll take off over with 2.58 to go in this first half. Nice punt that time. Good roll. Number 33, Kyle Bradford on the kick. Nice punt. Rice didn't think he could field it cleanly and uh, wisely let the ball roll. There's no need muffing or fumbling the ball down there. And, and – uh, giving Cave City an opportunity to take over deep in, in the Mohawk territory. Let's see if Pickett does anything with uh, 2.58 to go in this first half. You know, Bill, that might have been a wise choice that he did let that go. I mean, yes. as, as They've done what well they wanted to do on offense. The ball, uh, Absolutely. I don't say nothing wrong with that. Pitch back to three. Got a, got a flag on the, on the play. That was Corbin Chase that went in for Hal. Quick hit that time. Is that Chase with the ball? I think so. Another flag. Going to have a motion penalty against the Mohawks. Somebody move before the snap. Venture to guess, maybe they'll go ahead and take that one. Ball snapped back and dropped. A ball one, but he still picks it up, and he goes uh, for about a four-yard gain. What happened right there? I heard a whistle it, blow, and it, it looks like they stopped. Uh, snapped the ball before the referee said, yeah, it "Play like ball." The re referee was putting it in, or getting ready to blow the whistle, put it in play. The ball was snapped. We're going to have a fourth down, fourth and uh, five. We're going to call it, and Cave City has called timeout. Coach Hendricks going out to talk to his team. He wants to make sure that they punt this ball, that they've got plenty of blocking. They don't need the ball. They don't need a block right here, a block punt, to change momentum of this game. Cave City, on the other hand, a block punt or a big punt return would get the momentum changed right at halftime and, and give them something to go in uh, to talk about to come out in the second half, guys. Here we go. I don't know what he went in there and said, but <laughs> he took a lot in with him and brought a lot back he with sure him. Yes, he did. <laughs> Who's back deep to punt for us? 
Looks like Corbin Chase. Who's back to receive? Ed? That's a good question. It's hard to see, isn't it? Yep. It may be, uh, well, I'm not sure. Punts away. Oh, oh wow. Well, you could hear that hit all the I way up here. I think I felt it. 22 to 6, pick it on top. Carpenter with the snap back, looking downfield, being chased that time. He's going to go around the right side. Nice tackle that time. Travis Pawn. Gain 24. of about five. Clock is still running. Give him five on the play, but we've got timeout. With timeout, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. We've had a good time. I tell you what, folks, you need to come up and help us announce a game sometime. You get a laugh or two up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time to get serious. Minute 22 to go in this first half. Carpenter in the uh, shotgun. Oh, we've got a penalty on the play. See if Pickett was drawn off sides or if they went off on their own. I think Pickett's hoping that somebody moved on Cave City, but uh, when you're walking back to your side of the ball, slapping your helmet, it kind of tells the umpire and the referee there that maybe you uh, made the mistake. It's going to be offsides on the Mohawks, and that's going to put it down close to a first and ten. About a yard short. It first is. down. First it and is ten. First down. Gain of five and a five-yard penalty. Five and five. Ten. Still a minute 22 to go. Cave City at the Mohawk 20-yard line. Carpenter still in the shotgun. Snap back. He rolls to left. He, he drops it. the ball. And he's, and he's down on his knee. He's down on his knee, so he's down. About the 32, 33 yard line. Loss of 13 on the play. I tell you, number 99, Taylor Wood, was licking his chops on that play. <laughs> yeah, I think when Carpenter looked up and saw him coming, he said, We'll just leave my knee down here. <laughs> because uh, it's either that or me against him. <laughs> It was a, I think I'd have probably done the same thing. I might have <laughs> laid down. <laughs> or said, here, here's the ball. He's, he's a big boy now. Yes, he is. Three wideouts this time on the right side for Cave City, one on the left. Carpenter puts the ball up. Oh, inside, Lost nice catch. About to the original line of scrimmage. Clock is going to continue to run. 20 yard on maybe the 19. That look, he was brought down by 72 Westwood and number two Daniel Baldwin. It looked like Nick uh, Pearson with the catch on that play. Cave City will take another timeout. 25 seconds to go in this first period of play. Bring up about a third and eight, nine. I think they're going to call it eight, or excuse me, nine. Nine. Scoreboard says eight. Ball marker looks like nine. Well, it really doesn't make any difference. They're going to have time for one or two more plays, and that's going to be it. Ed Winberry, Superintendent of Schools. Pickett just walked into the booth. He's got a big grin on his face tonight, folks. He likes what he sees so far. As I said many, many times, we appreciate the uh, Pickett School District, the school board, all the fans. The supporters of the Pickett Mohawks for allowing us to bring this game to you. We have a lot of fun when we come down here, and Chris Bellers is just uh, doing an outstanding job for us. We appreciate him helping us out. Very unique uh, formation this time for Cave City. Drops back, going to throw a screen out in the flat. It's going to be stopped short. Good defense that time by the Mohawks. Kept him in bounds. Clock is, the still, clock running. is still running. Down to 10 I, seconds. Cave City's timeouts. trying to get into a formation without timeouts. It's fourth down. Clock still running. And the horn Last goes play. off as a ball is snapped. They're going to let the play go. And the ball yeah, is intercepted off. by the Mohawks. So great play. That ends the first half of play with the Mohawks on top of the Cave City Cavemen, 22-6. We'll take a short break and be back in just a moment. 
The Piggott Diner, located on the historic square in Piggott, opens seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Friday night buffet with ribs, catfish, chicken, frog legs, fried shrimp, and all the trimmings, plus homemade pies and cobblers and everyone's favorite ice cream. Sunday lunch buffet from 11 to 2. Our phone number is 870-598-5130. Call for takeouts, but better yet, come enjoy meeting with your friends at the Piggott Diner. Piggott Community Hospital is a proud sponsor of Piggott Mohawk Football. For over 60 years, Piggott Community Hospital has delivered quality health care to the communities of Northeast Arkansas and Southeast Missouri. Please visit all our locations, including our home health, medical equipment store, and medical clinic in Campbell, Missouri. You can visit our website at piggottcommunityhospital.com or call us at 870-598-3881. Piggott Community Hospital, where quality people give quality care. For over 50 years, the General Baptist Nursing Home in Campbell, Missouri has provided professional health care for its residents. General Baptist Nursing Home is a 90-bed Medicare, Medicaid certified facility with a wide range of services provided by Advanced Therapy Associates. We offer a full-time beautician, a special needs unit, an enclosed courtyard, lounging areas, superb dining, and medical staff 24 hours a day. General Baptist Nursing Home, a tradition of caring since 1954. Welcome to halftime. We're speaking with Superintendent of Schools here at Pickett, Ed Winberry, and Ed, a uh, great first half by the Mohawks. Mohawks are doing a good job tonight. They uh, kind of been in a little slump, slowed down, but now they're picking it up and really putting on the show for us tonight. Uh, the kids are looking good. Uh, school district, anything good uh, or anything big going on that we need to talk about? Uh, no, the uh, only thing is I got in trouble last week, and I tried to remember everybody to thank and appreciate, and my bus drivers got left out. And, you know, if we didn't have them getting the kids to school, we wouldn't even have school. So they do an outstanding job, too. So Brother Kevin will be he will be thankful for that I said something about him tonight. But uh, <laughs> uh, we, we had a good week at school. Everything's going good. Uh, we're just having homecoming next week. We'll be getting ready for that. That'll be a big, big deal all week. And uh, all the girls get excited and everything. So uh, I've been through, I don't know how many of them here. And uh, it's always fun to have homecoming and and uh, do do those uh, things that you do when you have homecoming. Uh, we really appreciate, uh, again, uh, the, the job that you do and for allowing us to come uh, and do your football games. Uh, we've heard so many comments from people all over the Pickett area that uh, how much they enjoyed the game uh, the last time that we brought it and I know they'll enjoy this game even more and we'll be bringing homecoming and all the festivities there so we, well, we, we thank you. You know we got uh, a lot of compliments on the people that, uh, that uh, sponsored last week and the ads that uh, that you put together for them I think you know they're first class you know and, and they were proud to get uh, to have that on TV we're, and we're glad you know that you're over here it's helping us out and and in return, if there's anything that we can do for, you know, wide sea, we're going to do it. Well, we appreciate that. Right. That's Ed Winberry at halftime here. Pickett Mohawks on top of Cave City, 22-6. to six. We'll be back in just a moment with Brother Kevin Murray. For more than 100 years, Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance has been a leader in the abstract and title insurance business. Clay County Abstract is licensed in both Arkansas and Missouri. From the simplest to the most complex residential or commercial real estate transactions, let the professionals at Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance show you why customers continually turn to us for the reliability, responsiveness, and security they need. I'm Kevin Murray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Pickett. And I want to invite you and your family to join me and mine every Friday night for Mohawk football. And then on Sunday mornings, join us at Emmanuel Baptist Church as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come join us. The 2008 Mohawk football season is here, and Coach Dave Hendricks and the Mohawks are excited about the future. This could be the year that dreams come true for the Mohawks. I'm Coach Dave Hendricks, and I approve this message. This is your State Farm agent, Brett McMillan, and we know that getting the best value for money is important to you when you're looking for insurance. That's why for great service and coverage, nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Please stop by our office located on the Pickett Square or give us a call at 598-2808 for all your insurance needs. State Farm wishes the 2008 Pickett Mohawks a successful season. 
We're speaking with Brother Kevin Murray uh, and Kevin, uh, the Manual Baptist Church. We appreciate uh, you guys uh, supporting Pickett Mohawk football. I tell you what, uh, I, I know you've got to be blessed. Uh, uh, your church is growing. Uh, we went to your Easter uh, uh, mm-hmm. thing that you had last year. I was just amazed yeah. how many people. Uh, what a wonderful church you have. That's right. We live in a great community. You yes, know, as you look out here and you see all these people come out, they just support all things. That's why it's important for us, Emmanuel Baptist Church, to support, give back to our community, and that's what we think we are doing uh, by supporting the Mohawk football. We appreciate YHCTV and New Wave Communications. Uh, this is kind of neat. This past week, or we were away last week, but our first home game, it was exciting. I think we watched that game like four times, so uh, <laughs> we knew every play. So, But it was great. You, you guys did a great job, and we just appreciate you coming to town. And, yes, the Lord has been super good to us at Emmanuel. So. And I'm Bill Hampton, and I approve this ad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's that it. was so good. All the kids, they, they couldn't wait to see that commercial <laughs> because of uh, Coach Hendricks. He's such a, uh, an intense person. And, you know, then when he did that, it just kind of let his hair down a little. Well, he doesn't have any hair. So. <laughs> well, he's kind of like <laughs> Yeah, Bill that's Hampton. right. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin wrote the uh, script for all that uh, particular ad, and I'll tell you what, it was great fun to put together, and, and uh, we enjoyed that. We've had more comments on all the yeah. ads that we've done, but uh, yours in particular because of Coach pointing That's his right. fingers. So. It was a lot of fun. The kids were looking forward to that. And just like, you know, uh, I don't know how many home games we've got, maybe five. five. Do we have five home games? And so uh, we're excited about being able to watch those throughout the week. We appreciate, and I just can't say enough, enough how much we appreciate because, uh, you know, uh, we got more than our money's worth because, you know, we expected just a couple, and you guys did a super job. And I just encourage anybody who's watching that to, to uh, if you want to get your name out there, White's, CTV is a good place, and uh, you well, you all. I am amazed at how many people watch, and so uh, I'm even turning in one of my favorite shows is the race show. So uh, <laughs> big race fan, and I didn't get to watch last week, but I guess Greg Biffle won again. Yes, and so he's won two in a row now, yep. and uh, so. Man, everybody's going to be on his bandwagon. That's so, right. uh, But anyway, uh, we certainly appreciate it. And uh, the church, I uh, just want to invite anybody that, you know, hey, there's a lot of good churches in town. There's not just Emmanuel Baptist Church. I could name them all. And uh, if you don't have a good place to go and serve the Lord or worship, uh, we're not the only church in town. I think we're a pretty good one. But uh, anyway, but this coming uh, week, uh, October the 5th, we're having Friend Day, and at 5 o'clock, I don't want to encourage anybody to miss their church, but 5 o'clock on Sunday evening, uh, October the 5th, we're having uh, just a community-wide fish fry. Anybody that wants to come, YHC TV, you know, if you guys want to come and get some free fish, we encourage you to come, and then that night we're going to have a concert by a group, and so it's just going to be a good day. But anyway, we just appreciate you guys being in town and covering these football games. Appreciate it. Man, I listened to you. I'm standing right here by the, by the booth, so I feel like I'm getting play by play all you guys in here so it's just super good and uh, Chris my uh, neighbor he lives in the same neighborhood so I was giving him a hard time this week and uh, he said I'm gonna do better I'm gonna do I said I thought you did great the he last did. time he so he does a great job yeah so anyway but thank y'all very much for having us and uh, we appreciate being a partner with white CTV and new wave communications thank you well that's Kevin Murray we're going to take another short break we'll be back in just a moment Kevin Murray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Pickett. And I want to invite you and your family to join me and mine every Friday night for Mohawk football. And then on Sunday mornings, join us at Emmanuel Baptist Church as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come join us. The 2008 Mohawk football season is here, and Coach Dave Hendricks and the Mohawks are excited about the future. This could be the year that dreams come true for the Mohawks. I'm Coach Dave Hendricks, and I approve this message. For more than 100 years, Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance has been a leader in the abstract and title insurance business. Clay County Abstract is licensed in both Arkansas and Missouri. From the simplest to the most complex residential or commercial real estate transactions, let the professionals at Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance show you why customers continually turn to us for the reliability, responsiveness, and security they need. This is your State Farm agent, Brett McMillan, and we know that getting the best value for money is important to you when you're looking for insurance. That's why for great service and coverage, nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Please stop by our office located on the Pickett Square or give us a call at 598-2808 for all your insurance needs.
State Farm wishes the 2008 Pickett Mohawks a successful season. Hey guys, the uh, Pigot Booster Club, you know, I think they've done a really good job this well, year. Well, the hamburgers are great, aren't they? They are. They, they put a lot of hard work and effort into the games, you know, and, you know, they're, they're needing some help in the concession stand and the gate. You know, if you're interested and you want to volunteer, I got some phone numbers. You can contact Tracy Wright at 598-4033, Kelly Williams, 324-0185, or Kim Rouse at 598-7941, and I guarantee you they could put you to work, and they'd appreciate any help that you'd like to volunteer. You know, when we got ready to start this game tonight, we forgot to mention the coaching staff of both teams. Who's coaching for Pickett? Hey, I got that covered. That's uh, head coach <laughs> David <laughs> Hendricks, and there's, he's assisted by Coach Michael Harold and Sean Hearn. Cave City coaches, uh, head coach is John Bradley. The assistants are Alan Redding and Travis Stewart. And, Ed, tell us who the uh, cheerleaders are for the Pigot Mohawks. We got several. Yes. But uh, we got uh, seniors are Elise Watson, Kylie Mode, Colby Laxton, Emily Ennis, Nicole Foster, and Tiffany Wearsbacky, Bicky, excuse me there, Tiffany. Juniors are Amber Broadway, Ashley Anderson, Jessica Hendricks, Camista Sanders, Corey Lehman, Shana Duffy, and the sophomores this year are Katie Strickland, Jill Parker, Emily Poe, and Ariel Kate. They do a good job, too. They do an awesome job down there, an Pickett, awesome job. Pickett Band did a great job, and, uh, of course, Steve got a little bit of that, but uh, while we were uh, talking to uh, Ed Winberry, the superintendent of schools, and also Kevin Murray, he was getting us on there. We're getting ready for the start of the second half, so we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with your second half kickoff in just a moment. Baldwin's going to keep it. Looked like a miscommunication there, broken play, but he... Uh, Got something out of nothing, maybe only a yard, but at least it went for a positive gain. Brings up second and nine. Number 42, Gary McSpadden in on the tackle. Pickett had some uh, big yardage in their first half, all on rushing. 
except for the one pass play. And that was an outstanding ball one to Rice. Oh, that, that was pass. beautiful. Beautiful. Full house by the Pickett Bullhawks. Ball pitch back two, three. Three's going around the Look left at side. Go. Look at him. Down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds that time. Who knocked him out, Ed? That's number 30, uh, Dakota Tuggle. Well, that was another good, strong run. He just followed his blockers, and when the hole opened up, he took off. Cross midfield down to the Cave City men 41-yard uh, line. First and 10, Mohawks. Sean Parker gets the crowd fired up with that another first down. So he, <laughs> he does, does a good he job. He does that well. He does it. Mohawks come back up to the line. Baldwin under center. Hand off number 40 up the right side to Justin Howe, and he'll gain probably six, seven yards. Six. Let's call it uh, six. Bring up second and four. We're going to mark it right there at the 35 of Cave City. And, you know, we got another good view of the, the hole that was open that time, too. Yes. It's, yeah. it's got a been good view that way number, since the beginning. Got a good view of number 22 and number 30, Braden Crabtree and Dakota Tuggle in on the stop as well. They've been on a lot of stops tonight because – Tuggle has, that's for sure. Well, Pickett's getting to that backfield pretty Absolutely. Easy. You know, you said in the first half, you just can't give enough credit to that offensive line right. for the Mohawks. Morgan carried the ball that time for a first and ten. Mohawks have it at the uh, Cave City 30-yard line. Clock running. Just started the third quarter. We're down to 10 minutes, 30 seconds to go in this third period. Mohawks on top of Cave City 22-6. to six. Ball went to the line, looks everything over. He's going to keep it. He's going around the right side. Nice wow. tackle that time. You know, Bill, while they're coming back to their huddle, might want to mention next week is homecoming for Piggott. They'll be hosting Earl. Yep. That's the Bulldogs. New Wave Communications is excited about that. We'll be handing out, a, with the help of the Booster Club, they'll get koozie cups with every drink. Uh, the cheerleaders are going to be throwing out souvenir footballs throughout the game. We'll have, have some tell, fans. I have to tell so my it's, kids. It's going to be a hot time, hot time, great time. That's next uh, Friday We're, night. New Waves are glad to be a part of the community and really looking forward to the event. Quick hit opener that time. Looked like three the ball carrier. Again, Dakota oh. Tuggle in on that stop. Another first and ten for the Mohawks as they came out the second half where they uh, did uh, the first half just driving the ball. Probably a, kind of a short talk by coach there. Okay, next half, here's what we're going to do, guys. Same thing we did in first half. Yeah, exactly. Just mirror that. That short message was understood, and they're out here doing it. <laughs> exactly. First and 10 from the Cave City 19-yard line. Ball went under center. Full house backfield. Ball pitched out to Number Howell. 40, Howell. Al being caught in the backfield well, and tripped oh, up. Nice shoe strength tackle that time. Who got him, Ed? That's number 33 again. A Kyle, Kyle Bra Bradford, excuse me. Just stayed with it and didn't give up on it. Six yard loss brings up a second and 16. Looks like Hal and Threat's going to come out and Samples and Chase is going to go into the game. And I'm sure they'll be in the backfield. Oh, very good defensive play that time is a Allen Wright, a double reverse that time. Got just enough hand on the jersey. Who was the ball carrier? Corbin Chase, number one. You know, that play was open, too, if he hadn't got a hold of his jersey. Could have seen something big, Bill. Yep. Just one, one more step. Clock running. Eight minutes, ten seconds to go in this third period of play. Mohawks got a third and 20. It's third and 20. I had a third and 16 a while ago. In the shotgun is Baldwin. In motion is Rice. Rice has a ball. He's going to go the left side. It's going to be stacked up for a... a a small gain. Clock still running. Number 33, Kyle Bradford. 
Gain of about uh, five on the play. Uh, it's going to bring up a fourth and 15. Looks Chris, like they're they going to go for it. It's getting ready to ask, do they have a field goal? Alex Samples is into the game, going to come in out. the game plan or? Wide left. Wide right is going to be Rice, and in the slot is going to be number 33. Rice is going to, or uh, Bowen's going to keep it. It's Allen going to be Wright brought the down tackle. for about a yard loss. Pickett's going to turn the ball over on downs. Michael Morgan was in the slot that time, and uh, there's nobody open. Good defensive uh, play by the Cave City uh, defensive backs. Good pursuit by the lineman that time. Looked Cave like City. Wright just stayed home that time yep. and had his eyes on Baldwin and got a hold of him, brought him down. Carpenter under center. Oh, boy, nice run, but a great tackle that time. Upended the big guy. That was uh, Tyler Engelman on the carry. Thank you. Alex Number Samples. 12. Alex Samples was the one that brought him That's down. Nice on that tackle. One. Cave City, they're, they're continuing to pack them in tight. They get a lot of, I don't know, motion in the back and inside handoff, reverses, and try to keep that front line guessing. But so far, Pig has get, got it handled. Looked like Pitts coming out that time limping a little bit, uh, looking at his uh, knee there. Going in is uh, Whitten for Pitts. Second seven. Tyler Engelman oh, around the corner that time. Engelman has got through. He's across midfield, across the 40, down to the Pickett Mohawk 34-yard line. Alex Samples, number 15, finally brought him down. You're not complaining. You're just letting them know they, uh, you know, that went for a big gain and went for a reason that he thought. Looks like they're going to take him for about a yard loss. Yard loss. Chase Gorman wasn't successful in getting around the other corner. Good defensive play. I think that was Alex Samples again. It's going to bring down, what, a second and – Ten. Second, second, second and eleven. Uh, second a short eleven. Second long ten. Long one ten. One. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's more than ten, but less than eleven. Different offensive setup, isn't it? No, it's the same thing. But I mean, it, it's just it just looks different. They're, they're all so close together. Tyler Engelman on the carry, cut it back up inside, and think it was there. You know, I'm not an expert, but it. I think that's a wing T. Okay. Maybe. Looks good I, to me. If I'm wrong, don't tell me, but <laughs> that's it's only on it. tape for posterity, so you'll be good to go. <laughs> Gotta bring up a third and six for the cavemen. Fans nope. are getting into it. They're they're hollering for that defense over here on the picket side. Little reverse inside and uh, goes for a good gain. Chase Gorman. I think Engelman got the initial handoff and inside handoff back yep. to Gorman. You know, Pickett runs that same play. They ran out a while ago. Double reverse handoff inside right there behind the center. I'm, you, I'm just still wondering if I was right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you were wrong, you will hear about it I'll, this week. Yeah, I promise you. And let me tell you, folks, we enjoy the comments we get from you. I, we, we appreciate it, I guarantee you. We know we make mistakes, but we enjoy what we do, and we hope you enjoy the games. Handoff at time two. It's number 12, Tyler Engelman. Bring up second and about seven. Clock running, 4-10 to go in this third period. Pick it on top of Cave City, 22-6, to six, but no scoring. In this uh, third quarter, big number 70, uh, Daniel Chandler just checked in. For number 57, Justin, Justin Tompkins. Tompkins. Yeah. 
Carpenter under center. He He's drops back to pass. He's got someone wide open in the end zone. He goes out in the flats. It is complete. Good tackle at time. First open down. field tackle, but inside the 10-yard uh, line down to about the 7 of the Mohawks. Who made that catch, Ed? Did you, could so, you see? I'll tell you here in a second. Long tell you I got number. his helmet. It's number 80, isn't it, Tyler uh, Asbury? No. It's not. It's number 25. Excuse me. Well, it's Joseph close, Curtis. Close to 80. Well, that was Alex Sample that made that big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I got that you, one. I, those numbers, uh, I, I'm having trouble reading on those white jerseys. And I, I know when you're down closer, it, it's probably a lot easier. First and go from the pig at eight. We're going to have a penalty. I think might be a procedure. Look like uh, almost like both backs sure. may moved a little like before the snap. Up, right. Illegal shift, they call. It's going to bring up a. I believe you're only allowed to have one person in motion at a time after, they're, after you're set. That's right. My buddies wearing the black and white told me that at halftime. So, okay. <laughs> so I'd sound real smart in the second half. First to 13. <laughs> Handoff inside that time on a trap. He was stacked up right at the line. Who was the ball carrier, Ed? Could, could you get the number on that? No, I did not. Thir is it 32 or 22? Looked like a seven on the jersey. Well, number 32 is the fullback, Jeremy Johnson. 32, 32 that's who it was. Yep. That two looks like a seven for me. I, I need to go see my eye doctor. Gain of one, we're going to give them. Going to be a second goal from the 12. Come out in a new formation, a different one. Now they've got uh, three wideouts, one in motion. Ball snapped back to the man in Tyler motion. Tyler Engelman. He's uh, down inside, inside the, the five. five, down to the four. Going to bring up a third goal from the four for the cavemen. Good play that time. Look like number 72, Wes Wood, and number 12, Rob Rice. Brought him down out there. A lot of yardage in this game by both teams. We thought it might be a kind of a high-scoring game. Has been on one side of the ball. Couple of handoffs. Chase yep. Gorman on the carry, he's and he's across the line. There. Yep. He got the momentum going, started running downhill. He didn't want to be denied that time. Double hand off the backfield. It goes right off the left uh, guard and right in for the score. Nice run with 2.22 to go in this third quarter. 22 to 12 now. Looks like Cave City might uh, go for one. Nope, they're going to bring in a play. They're going to go for two. Thought someone was bringing in a, a different shoe, but they're not. Two wide outs, one in the slot. Chase Gorman again? No. Nope. Yep, not going to get in that not time. Not make it. Mohawks held that time. Tried to run that trap to the inside again. It did not work. Looked like he ran into big number 99, Taylor Wood. <laughs> well, the Mohawks stopped the two-point conversion, so with 2.22 to go in the third period of play, let's pick at 22, Cave City 12. We'll be back in just a moment. For more than 100 years, Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance has been a leader in the abstract and title insurance business. Clay County Abstract is licensed in both Arkansas and Missouri. From the simplest to the most complex residential or commercial real estate transactions, let the professionals at Clay County Abstract and Title Insurance show you why customers continually turn to us for the reliability, responsiveness, and security they need. Kevin Murray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Pickett. And I want to invite you and your family to join me and mine every Friday night for Mohawk football. And then on Sunday mornings, join us at Emmanuel Baptist Church as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come join us. The 2008 Mohawk football season is here, and Coach Dave Hendricks and the Mohawks are excited about the future. This could be the year that dreams come true for the Mohawks. 
I'm Coach Dave Hendricks, and I approve this message. This is your State Farm agent, Brett McMillan, and we know that getting the best value for money is important to you when you're looking for insurance. That's why for great service and coverage, nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Please stop by our office located on the Pickett Square or give us a call at 598-2808 for all your insurance needs. State Farm wishes the 2008 Pickett Mohawks a successful season. I want to thank Front Porch Flea Market. Uh, they have furniture, appliances, and much more. Front Porch Flea Market also has propane 20 pound bottle exchange. Also available at Front Porch Flea Market, they have rental booths for only $50. Call Monty Howell at 870 598 2014. Monty says, Good luck, Mohawks, in 2008. Back deep for the Mohawks, number 12, Rob Rice, and I think that's number 15, Alex Sample. William Boyd kicking off. Nice deep kick that time. Drives all the way, drives Rice back all the way to the nine. He's across the 20, up to the 25. Got some he's room. going to the right there side. He goes. 30, 35, 40. 45, he's across the, up to midfield and across down to the 46 yard line. Rob Rice, a nice return on that. Looked like he might have been back at the 10. About a 46-yard return that time. Nice run back by Rob Rice as he went right up the middle and cut it to the outside. Good blocking that time by the Mohawks. 2.09 to go in this third period of play. 22 to 12. Pickett. Well, this game's not over. Pickett. Not, uh, not at all. Pickett needs to continue just moving the ball like they have been the entire game. Oh, what a nice stop that time. Right up the middle that time was. Michael Morgan, and he was met by number 60. Yeah. That's uh, Weston Telford. Boy, he hit him. And he hit, hit him. him hard. Yeah, he, well, he, he goes 6'4", uh, 250. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's that not 250, <laughs> that's 250. <laughs> 250. My wife and I were going over the lineups this afternoon for uh, Cave City, and, boy, they, they have some big guys. They really do. Looks like they're fired up right now at defense. Let's see what Pickett comes back to counter. Second 10, no gain on that play. Ball given two. Three. He's going to get a couple, it looks like. Yeah, he was met there by Garrett McSpadden, number 42. Right about the line of scrimmage, it looked like. Going to bring up a third and eight. Looks like Baldwin's going back in the game and along with uh, Josh Pitts. Quarterback keeps the ball, pitches back two, three. Three is going to be stopped short. He's going to be ran out of bounds about the 40-yard line. A lot of water under that old bridge. Here we go, fourth, fourth down. Three. Pitches it to Chase and he isn't gonna get it. No. He didn't I don't I think he stopped the line of scrimmage. Stacked up by number forty two. Garrett McSpadden. Great Cape, stop. Cave City's gonna take over at the at their own forty yard line. They've got good field position. Forty three seconds to go in this third quarter. Well that's exactly what the coach wants to see on the defensive side of the ball coming out of a timeout like that, but I'm sure coach on the offensive side said, shucks, mm -hmm. not exactly how I had it drawn up. You know, you kind of feel like the momentum's changing a little bit. And I'd say if Pickett didn't want that to happen right now is the time to make that stand on defense. That's Absolutely. Defense. Absolutely. Chase Gorman on the carry, pitch Boy, back. Good run, middle, good run, good run. Game's about nine on the play. Going to bring up a second nine. Look like three Mohawks in there, Chris. Do you see who got there first? I couldn't tell. I got to looking at the coaches down there. Those cavemen may be trying to shift the momentum from the Mohawks, but they're not shifting the momentum from the broadcast booth, that's for sure. <laughs> that Chris Ellis is still all over it. Here's Tyler Engelman, number 12, on the carry. He's going to go across down. midfield down to the Pickett Mohawk 45 for a First and ten. Look like four four black jerseys in there at that time, Chris. 
four or five. Looks like Cord Pike's going to come out, and they've sent Morgan, 33, back in there. Well, the clock's going to wind down to end the third period with the Mohawks on top of the Cavemen, 22 to 12. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Piggott Community Hospital is a proud sponsor of Piggott Mohawk Football. For over 60 years, Piggott Community Hospital has delivered quality health care to the communities of Northeast Arkansas and Southeast Missouri. Please visit all our locations, including our home health, medical equipment store, and medical clinic in Campbell, Missouri. You can visit our website at piggottcommunityhospital.com or call us at 870-598-3881. Piggott Community Hospital, where quality people give quality care. This is your State Farm agent, Brett McMillan, and we know that getting the best value for money is important to you when you're looking for insurance. That's why for great service and coverage, nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Please stop by our office located on the Pickett Square or give us a call at 598-2808 for all your insurance needs. State Farm wishes the 2008 Pickett Mohawks a successful season. The Piggott Diner, located on the historic square in Piggott, opens seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Friday night buffet with ribs, catfish, chicken, frog legs, fried shrimp, and all the trimmings, plus homemade pies and cobblers and everyone's favorite ice cream. Sunday lunch buffet from 11 to 2. Our phone number is 870-598-5130. Call for takeouts, but better yet, come enjoy meeting with your friends at the Piggott Diner. I want to tell you, for all your real estate needs, see Piggott Realty. From owning your own home to rentals, farms, commercial property, and more, call Mike or Pat Patterson at 870-598-3142. Pickett Realty says go Mohawks. We've got a flag on this play. Who's got the ball? Is that Engelman? He, he fumbles fumbled. the ball. Pickett's going to pick it up. Yes, yeah, Tyler Engelman on the carry. Let's Great see who run, the flag goes against here. Look like Alex Samples come up with the fumble recovery. And first down Mohawk, so there's your momentum changer right there, there Chris. There it is. Flag on the play. Let's see who it's against. Coach Hendricks waving his arms to climb it. It's going to be holding against Cave City. Pickett's going to refuse. Pickett will take over on their own 20-yard line. Boy, that did change the momentum back. You hear the crowd there excited and fired up. Tonight's game brought to you by Al Williams Nursery, located 1167 East Main in Pickett. So they support the Pickett Mohawks from flowers to grass seeds, fertilizer to trees. See Al Williams Nursery, open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, 8 to noon on Saturdays. Phone 870-598-3357. That's Al Williams Nursery in Pickett. One of the Pickett boosters helped bring you this game tonight. Again, folks, if you enjoy watching Pickett Mohawk football, white CTV. Tell these folks that are sponsors and bringing the advertising, because they are they make it possible. Three with the ball, good He's run. On his feet. He gets Shoe a cross. string oh. tackle there. He got across the 35 up to the 36 yard line of the Mohawks for a first and ten. Nice run. I tell you what, the young man gets the outside, he goes, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I wonder how, how he'd like to run a uh, old fat 60-year-old guy. You think I could stay with him for the first two steps? I don't Absolutely. know, but I bet I could get that arranged for you. <laughs> <laughs> when do you want to do that? We, we might want to film that. <laughs> it's number 25, Joseph Crabtree with the shoestring tackle there. <laughs> Ed, you might want to show up Monday afternoon. We might get to see that. Tell you what, um, if I've got the ball and those big guys are chasing me, I'm going to run a whole lot no, faster. No, no, no. I don't want anybody hitting me. I just want to <laughs> run a foot race. <laughs> I think that's Morgan. Morgan with the ball. I bet I'm dead even with them at the starting line, though. <laughs> Gain of two. <laughs> brings up second and eight. About 11 minutes in the fourth quarter. Well, this game's going fast. This second half fast. is just zipping by. Well, when you keep it on the ground... And uh, not a lot of penalties. And keeping the ball inbounds, that clock's going to run. Of course, the clock right now is a big help to the Mohawks. They're up by 10. Whoops. Well, that's a good tackle. Baldwin kept the ball at time. He looked like he got back uh, maybe for a yard loss. 
had me faked out. I thought three had the ball and was going up the center. I was getting ready to say, look at that game. <laughs> it's number 16, Nick Townsend. Well, it's going to bring up third and eight for the Mohawks. They're on about their own 38. 38. Good crowd on hand tonight. We've got a three with the ball to the outside. He's going to gain a few, but going to be stopped way short of the first and ten. Say the first and ten, the first down. He's going to be stopped short. Going to bring up a fourth and we'll call it five. Has Pickett punted tonight? I don't believe so. Yes, they did. They did one time in the first half. Carpenter back in the shotgun. Snap back. He drops back to pass. Catches a man over the center. Could not uh, have was Engelman. Yes, sir. Intended and for Tyler Engelman. Snap back. He looks downfield. He's going to go to the outside and roll. He puts the ball up. Got his receiver incomplete. out there, but it's incomplete. Third and ten. Third and ten. They've got the only guy in the backfield is the quarterback. They've got four receivers lined up. And here they come. Steps up. Oh, a good Wide catch open. that time. It's going to the outside. Good block downfield. He could. Up oh, he goes stop him. Who was that, Ed? That's number 25, Joseph Curtis on the catch. Good catch and a good cut back to the inside. Picked up additional yardage. Number 45, Chase Corbin, hard run. Yep. Rolling out is Carpenter. He's got a receiver, got him. And looks like he went right down about the one, maybe. It's going to be Asbury. Be close. But it looks like they've kind of opened it up and spread it out just a little bit this second half. Pickett didn't see a lot of that the first half to make the adjustments at halftime to it. Touchdown. Tyler Engelman in for the from two yards out to make the score 22 to 18. First extra point he missed. High snap, ball down, kick up. We've got a flag on the play. We're going to have a procedural procedure play against Cave City. Line drive that's kick, no and that's going to be off the side this time. So Pickett's going to keep a four point lead with 7.40 to go in this game. 22 to 18. We'll be back in just a moment. He's going to go deep this time. Who's it going to? Rob Rice. Rob Rice. Rice has it on the seven, or I'll call it the eight. Goes the outside. Nice open field tackle that time. Number 25. Ball went under center. Gets the ball back to three. Man. Three tried to cut it back. He's going to be stopped for no gain. He's going to pitch to Chase. Boy, oh, he runs low and keeps the legs driving. Ball pitch back to three. Three's going to try the left side. Good open field tackle that time. Good hit. And a flag. We're going to have a flag. Got a flag. Personal was, foul against the Mohawks. Mm -hmm. That's going to hurt. Number 42, Gary McSpadden on the stop. They're going to move it back. See if, see if it's still third down or it's going to bring up a fourth down. Fourth down's a call. That was a dead ball foul after the play was over with. Snap back. Big Good kick. 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 And they're going to let it bounce. It does go across midfield. It got them out of a, a bad field position. Looks like they're in the wing tee. Chase Corman looking for some room. Cut we back got up for a couple. Westwood. Holding. Holding, holding against Cave City. That brings a little life into the crowd. Engelman with the ball. Got a oh, nice what stop. a tackle. Nice tackle. Who was that? Number think, 72, Westwood. Somebody will go in motion. Carpenter's going to drop back. He's, he's been hit by number 33, Michael Morgan, drags him down for probably about a 15, 16-yard loss. Well, said he's going to go for it on fourth down. They're in a shotgun over the middle. Ball is not knocked down. down, and we're uh -oh. going to have a flag. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. 11. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure. The down marker's not changed. First down. That pick at Mohawk D. 
defense is smiling out there because they're just providing more entertainment for the home crowd. Chase Corman could not get around the third, around the corner that time around. Got clock is there. He goes again. Pass complete. is complete, but it's going to be short of a first down. Here comes Tyler Engelman. No Got place to go. Be. Stop. Drop. Number 54, Cord Pike, and number 12, Rob Rice. Going to bring, bring the clock below two minutes. Step back. He's got it. Looks out in the flat for someone across the middle. Catch it's is good. By no, Tyler Engelman, number Engelman 12. Engelman with the catch, first and 10. In the shotgun. Carpenter running to the right. Puts it downfield. He's got a man. He overthrows him. This is the second year we've done football, or actually the third year, and this is the most exciting game we've had, and it's really a good ball game. Both sides, both teams have played hard. Hats off to both sides. Carpenter back, rolls to the right, down the field, across the middle. Is Asbury, he can't get it. Ball goes incomplete. Rolls to his right. Got a receiver open. He's got him, steps out of bounds. Right at the marker. Asbury's got a first and 10 with 124 to go. They're down to the Mohawk 34 yard line. Well, Pickett's not giving up the deep pass. They'll dunk it that 10 yards because the thing is, once they get down to the goal line, well, then they don't have that deep threat and they can continue to, and then they can shut that short pass down. The Cave City did a good job of setting up the defense for the short pass by going deep a couple times. Carpenter rolls to his left this time. We've got a uh, flag, and, and he's gonna be going to be thrown down. for a loss. About a nine-yard loss, 10-yard loss. Number 57, Justin Tompkins on the – May have been holding on the offense. I thought it might have been illegal hands to the back. Now you're right. Holding, we'll see what Pickett does here. The flag was thrown kind of right there where uh, the pocket was collapsing. Looks like – They'll take the yardage. Yeah. Pick is going to take the yardage because the clock's down to minute seven. And sure. They don't, they don't plan on getting the ball back unless it's a turnover, so the downs uh, don't make that yeah. much difference. So they're going to move them back uh, from the spot of the foul. So that's going to move them back ten more yards. Clock's on their side, so they want to put as much green as they can between the ball and the goal line. It's going to put it right at midfield. It's going to bring up a... First and about 25, 26 yards. We've got timeout on the field, but timeout on the field. We're going to send it back to the station, and we'll be back in just a moment. For over 50 years, the General Baptist Nursing Home in Campbell, Missouri, has provided professional health care for its residents. General Baptist Nursing Home is a 90-bed Medicare, Medicaid certified facility with a wide range of services provided by Advanced Therapy Associates. We offer a full-time beautician, a special needs unit, an enclosed courtyard, lounging areas, superb dining, and medical staff 24 hours a day. General Baptist Nursing Home, a tradition of caring since 1954. Piggott Community Hospital is a proud sponsor of Piggott Mohawk Football. For over 60 years, Piggott Community Hospital has delivered quality health care to the communities of Northeast Arkansas and Southeast Missouri. Please visit all our locations, including our home health, medical equipment store, and medical clinic in Campbell, Missouri. You can visit our website at piggottcommunityhospital.com or call us at 870-598-3881. Piggott Community Hospital, where quality people give quality care. Hi, I'm Kevin Murray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Pickett. And I want to invite you and your family to join me and mine every Friday night for Mohawk football. And then on Sunday mornings, join us at Emmanuel Baptist Church as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come join us. The 2008 Mohawk football season is here, and Coach Dave Hendricks and the Mohawks are excited about the future. This could be the year that dreams come true for the Mohawks. I'm Coach Dave Hendricks, and I approve this message. We saw him do it in one play in the first half. Defense coming. Oh, Justin Howell, out again. He, got, he got there in a hurry, guys. He's happy. He's excited. He Carpenter now is going to put it up. Throws it long. We've got it. Oh, fast oh. knocked down. It's going to be first and ten for 
Yeah. Cave City. They they get they get an extra down, and they get the yardage, but time's still running out. Forty-one yeah. seconds. Carpenter in the gun. Pickett's in the rush. Pass deep. He's got a receiver open and cannot get to it. Intense. <laughs> Intense is right, folks. We're seeing a great game. Dalton, Dalton Carpenter got a uh, got a good gun on him. He can put it up. Across the middle. Ball oh. almost intercepted that time by McMillan. Carpenter rolls to his right, voids one tackle, passes back across the, the Joseph middle. Joseph Curtis with the catch across the middle. Going to be close to a first down. With the first down, the clock will stop. 20, 23 seconds to go. We're down to the 29-yard line of the Mohawks. Carpenter rolls to his right. He likes to go to the right. He's going deep. He's got a bad open. In and oh, out of his head. Wow. Just there at the last second, number... Who is that out there? I think there? that's number 12, Tyler Engelman. Defending, who, number? Is that three? That's 23, that's Jim three, and he put a hand up just right at the right time, if it is. I think that's who it is. 12 seconds to go. Boy, that was close. Intercepted. Intercepted. Great Intercepted defense. by number 12, Rob Rice. Five seconds left. Rice right intercepts with five seconds to go, folks. You don't see a better game than this. It's been awesome, guys. This has well, been a D A N D Y dandy. <laughs> it has. Crowds <laughs> on their feet. Hey, don't, don't forget next weekend's homecoming. Everybody come out and support the Mohawks. Shouldn't be exciting. Got to be very exciting. That's the game. That's the game. Mohawks now go to three and one on the season with that win. A great game. Both teams deserved. Uh, they did a wonderful job. A lot of fun to watch. Pick it up uh, 22 to six a half and hang on to win this game by 22 to 18. Chris Bellers, Ed Gargas uh, helped bring you the game. I'm Bill Hampton. Hope you've enjoyed this game. And don't forget, homecoming next Friday night. Hope to see you here at the Pickett, uh, Pickett uh, football field for another great game. When, uh, when Earl comes to town, should be a dandy.